What's going on all you amazingly beautiful people? So as you can see, what I wanna talk about today is why in the world is organic chemistry so freaking difficult, right? And here's the thing, it's more than likely not what you think. I'm pretty sure all of you, whether you haven't taken it, you've just heard the stories, whether you've taken it and you know the experience or you're getting ready to retake it, I'm pretty sure you could give me a whole list of why this class is hard in terms of the stories that you've heard, the experiences you've had. But what I have found now, having done this for around 25 years, almost 26 years, is that the stories, the things students tell me, is not why it is a difficult class. Now, what you will find out if you haven't already is what you have done in the past, meaning what you've done to study for your exams in high school, what you've done to, done to study for your exams at your undergraduate classes, will not work when it comes to organic chemistry because the main model that vast majority of people use, if not all of them, is memorization, right? So let's say, for example, biology. You memorize a biological term, you regurgitate or throw that up on an exam, and boom, you get it, move on to the next one, right? Or in math or physics, you got a formula, you plug in the numbers, and then you spit out another number, boom, let's move on. When it comes to organic chemistry, there are no formulas in that way where you can plug things in and spit something out. What you have to be able to do is you have to be able to think differently. And this is the first thing in terms of why organic chemistry is challenging, not impossible or a weed out course, is you have to think differently. You cannot use the strategies of memorization and just reading the textbook and working problems to be able to excel in this class. You have to be able to think differently. Now, the cool thing about this that I have found is that the strategy you need to think differently, you already have in place. But here's the thing that I found. What tends to happen when you get into organic chemistry, I'm just gonna speak about that class because that's what I'm most familiar with, is the most common thing is, hey, like here's the advice. If you read the textbook, work the problem, you may or may not do well in the class because organic chemistry is hard. There's a bell cur curve distribution. You know, a lot of students fail the class. And if you fail the class, maybe you're not cut out for organic chemistry. Maybe you're not meant for medical school. That's the reason why we have organic chemistry. It's a weed out course, you know. Students that don't pass it, maybe you should think about changing your career. So all of this stuff, if you look at it, is slanted in the negative direction, thinking that organic chemistry isn't the problem, you are. And so I started to question this and say, okay, is that the case? Like, is organic chemistry really difficult? And so what I just started to discover when I started asking those questions, and not just asking them, but started to dive in, I realized that organic chemistry is not difficult for the reasons people think. And like I said, you have to be able to think differently. This is the first class that you're gonna come in contact with where you can't just do the same thing, but you already have the skills. So let me explain. Now, I'm pretty sure all of you have memorized some, pseudo, some sort of numerical system at one point in time. Now, I recognize everybody learned a different one because you're gonna be coming from different countries. This is obviously United States one, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, so forth and so on. And you've memorized them to such a degree that they are just basically unconscious. Just like you don't think to breathe or beat your heart, you don't have to think about numbers. You just know how to do them, right? But once you learned or kind of memorized that sequence, right, then you took it a step further and you were able to add and multiply, right? So if somebody said, hey, what's one plus one? Just like that, you could tell me two. Or if I said two plus two, just like that, you could tell me it's four, right? Or two times two is four. Now, if let's say, for example, you memorized one plus one, right? Equals two. And somebody said, cool, what's nine plus 10? You would automatically say, well, I, I don't know. Like I didn't learn that, right? So you can see in this demonstration, this example, memorization is not understanding the key. So in this case, if you understand, let's say addition, you can add any numbers together. I don't care if they're five, six, seven, eight, nine digits. Once you understand addition, it doesn't matter how complicated the question gets, you can answer it. Or same with multiplication. If you understand how to multiply, you can take those numbers and use them to your advantage. This is what I want to show you in organic chemistry. If you understand how to do the underlying principles, no matter how complicated the question is, you can do your quote unquote addition, multiplication, subtraction, division. You don't obviously do that in organic chemistry, but you get the idea. It's kind of an analogy where if you understand the principle, it doesn't matter how complicated it is, you can do it. You've also done this before as well with the alphabet. Once again, I recognize everybody's alphabet is going to be different. This is just the United States. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? 
So what you had to do is you had to learn the letters, you had to learn how to write the letters, and you had to learn how to pronounce them. A, B, C, A, B, C. I know it sounds stupid and, and kind of dumb for me to go through, but we had to learn it at some point in time, right? It's very simple. It seems kind of too simple for this example, but at one point in time, you then use those to write words like medical school. Once again, if you memorized how to write medical school, but you do not understand the process of taking letters and put them into words, if somebody said write the word bird as simple as it is, you can't. So the thing that I'm trying to convey here is that this simple principle of understanding how, in this case, to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, how to write words, we are going to apply to how to do organic chemistry. Because once you understand how to do organic chemistry, you can see with addition, if you know how to add, so what? Bring on the questions and know how to do it. Same thing, once you know how to do organic chemistry, cool, bring on the questions and know how to do it. That's the thing that we wanna be able to show you. And I think what tends to happen is we assume as educators, oh, well, you're an adult, you'll figure it out, right? But what I think is important is being able to figure out what are the most effective strategies that we can show students before they go into class and not make the assumption that maybe they already know this. Because in this case, we can see the fact that with organic chemistry, most students fail the class. So clearly there's a disconnect, not because the material is difficult, like everybody's going to tell you, but because there's a disconnect in the strategy. So the obvious question, the literally obvious question that I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping that all of you are asking is, then why are we not doing this with organic chemistry? If that's an effective way to learn, being able to do that, then why are we not doing this with organic chemistry? And that was a question I asked. Why are we not doing this? Why are we not teaching you how to decipher organic chemistry in a simplistic form and then apply that? And what I found over the years is, I think it's just because people thought it was just the way it is. From my understanding, it's just people just said, well, organic chemistry is difficult. You just have to think about it a different way and you either get it or you don't get it. But for me, I started studying, okay, well, here's the students that do well, here's the students that don't do well. Why are these students doing well and why are these students not doing well? And if these students aren't doing well, can we get them not to do well to then do well? I mean, you get the idea, I'm trying to make it simple, but, and I've wanted to understand that. So instead of just taking it at face value, like we all tend to do over our lives, say if somebody tells them, okay, that must be true. I was like, okay, well, does organic chemistry have to be hard? Um, if it's not hard, then what's actually the problem? Why are students failing it? We have thousands of resources online. Students are still failing it. So the logical conclusion is it must be a hard course, right? But the thing is, is you find out, as I found out, having done this for over 25 years now, almost 26, is you find out organic chemistry, the material is no more difficult than any other class you've taken. There's nothing more difficult in it than there is anything else. So I decided to dive in and after years of studying this material, applying, the, applying all this in lab, learning the material, doing questions, teaching it, teaching other people to teach, learning the psychology of learning, trying to understand why people succeed and why they fail, what I discovered was that there actually is a formula to learning organic chemistry. Now this formula really can be applied to any class, but I'm gonna focus on organic chemistry, that there is a way to effectively and efficiently learn organic chemistry in a similar way that we looked at before with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and just learning the letters of the alphabet and writing words. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions that I found over the years that it's that I have heard, and I wanna point this out first before I go there, I just thought about this, is that the content is important, okay? So what do I mean by that? Like biology, as you know, there's a certain language, like biologists talk about tissues and cells and animals and things like that. Physicists use the words energy or formulas. Mathematicians use formulas and numbers. Organic chemists talk about molecules and atoms. So there's a certain language to each thing. And the content, which is the language, is important. So I'm not going to deny that. You have to understand the language of organic chemistry to be able to understand it so you can talk to somebody. But the misconception that I found is that the content is not the key factor why students are failing this class, why students are struggling this class, why organic chemistry is a weed out course. That's not the problem. Everybody believes that organic chemistry is so much more difficult than other classes, and it's not. It's no different than any other class. It's just the fact that students have forgotten this strategy that they learned how to use and then figure out how somebody show them how to apply this in a systematic way to organic chemistry. So what I have found is that students have been using my proven effective strategy for years now where I've had students that basically I've worked with valedictorians that want to keep their grade. I've worked with this, I've worked with students that literally tell me like, Jay, I'm the dumbest person in the class. Like, I don't think you can help me, but I didn't know what else to do. And these students wound up moving towards the top of the class. 
So I've, and, and a lot of the students that I work with are far more intellectually superior than I am. Their, in, their IQs are much higher than mine. You can see my, my wording isn't that great, so they'd probably make fun of me. And they can't, they can't navigate organic chemistry. So you recognize it has nothing to do with your intellectual capacity, whether you're smart or you consider yourself dumb. It has nothing to do with the content being challenging. There is something else going on here. And I found out that with an effective strategy showing students how to look at this and think about this differently using the skills that you already have, students excel in this class. And the number one thing that I found is it starts with you. What do I mean by that? Now, I want to point out at first, I'm saying that like if a professor is teaching a class of 500, 400, 300, 200, 100, even a class of 30, and they're doing this multiple times a day, you cannot customize as a professor to every single student. That is impossible. You cannot. You have the best strategy that you put forth to the class. And then you, you know, in that, you're hoping that over the years of your experience, you found out that they're most effective to kind of maximize. In my situation, um, I have much more flexibility. And so over the past 25, almost 26 years, I get to test and try and this and that because I'm not bound by a university to do specific things. I have the freedom to kind of try and test things. So what I've been able to find is that one of the most important factors, whether I'm working one-on-one -on -one or in a small group or even a larger group, it's ultimately understanding how the students learn. Now, everybody has a lot of different things and most people will criticize and say, Jay, you can't possibly customize to everybody because everybody's got different learning styles. In a sense, that is correct, but there's also in another sense, what you can do is once you study human behavior and the understanding of learning and how students learn and just working with so many students, you begin to recognize there are certain patterns across the board. And if you start to address all of those patterns in a lecture, you can start to communicate with every single student in that class in a certain way where they feel like, oh my gosh, this is making sense. So what I do, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group, what I first try to figure out is how is it that you are processing things? What are you doing that's working? What are you doing that's not working? Where are the sticky points? What have you found that you're struggling with? Why are you struggling with that? And once I understand that, and it's a matter of me just going through organic chemistry with you, I can pick those things up within the first five to 10 minutes. From there, then what we do is then we move into learning organic chemistry. Because what I want to do is I don't want to take you and shove you into organic chemistry. I want to take what you do and make organic chemistry work in the way that you learn best. So obviously what I want you to be able to do is to learn my proven effective strategy that's been helping students at Harvard, Vanderbilt, the Ivy Leagues, community colleges, anywhere in between, excel in this class, no matter if you're at the top of the class, middle of the class, bottom of the class, because I've worked with all kinds of students who come in very confident, smart students, some that think they're not that smart and they can't navigate this class. So I would love to show you my proven strategy that's worked. So here's who this is for. It's pretty self-explanatory and kind of makes sense if you're an undergraduate student, you need to take this class. If you're pre-med, pre-vent, pre-dent, pre-nothing, if you're just an undergraduate student, you need to take the class. You're looking for a proven strategy and if you want it to be fun and not painful, I wanna help you excel in organic chemistry. And so it's really simple. All you have to wind up doing is just get in touch with me. You know, you can text me, you can email me. Um, if you've got my number, go ahead and get in touch. And what we'll do is we'll set up a five, 10, 15 minute session. What I tend to do is have you um, and your parents on there. If your parents are involved, I'd love to have them come on there because I'm pretty sure they're gonna have questions as well. If your parents aren't really involved, then it can just be you. But I wanna be able to have that free session with you and it's just a total free session. I'm just gonna kind of get a sense of what's going on. Even if you haven't taken the class, kind of go over, I'll ask you some questions. And then at the end of that free session, I'm gonna send you some information that's gonna help you in your organic chemistry class, no matter what. And then from there, if you find out the information was helpful and you like it, we can set something up and then we can get you excel in your class. So if this sounds interesting to you and you want to do exceptional in this class, go ahead and get in touch and I'd love to help you excel. Um, and with that, thanks so much for listening and I look forward to hearing from you.